up. Phone says we're live. Phone says we're live. We out here. We are, in fact, out here. That is, uh, this is true. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. Man. Jack, you sound as tired as me right now. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know why I woke up really tired today. Like, I, I slept, like, pretty normal today, too. Of all the days for me to be tired, this is not it, but. Might just be catching up after nothing. a very long day for you yesterday. I guess, yeah. I guess yeah, this is the latest week. I've woken up in a week. Yeah. So. Got you getting up, what, 7.30 every day? Effectively. Yeah, that's a that's a tough week even for me. I, I've oh, been sleeping because I'm working at home. I'm tired perpetually for whatever reason. I didn't even do anything yesterday. When you sit around, it really gets to you. That's when it's the worst. Yeah, that could be what takes the energy. Yeah, well, I, I want Jack back on court beat before the playoffs. Please, no. Uh, please, anything, anything. The best part of that was somebody tweeted at Jack and was like, "I would never want Jack on Jerry." Just so that you know. was wild. I was like, like I don't think Jack I thought, was, he was like, "Please tell everybody." Yeah, I was talking to my friend later that night about it, and I was like. Please, like, te- like I don't correct. I don't want to be on your jury, sir. Like, I, you're saying that as if this is some honor. I don't like that. Is the last thing I wanted going into this. I wanted an easy day. I wanted to be back for talking season. They had had me there for two full days. Like, this is some crap. Um, anyways, uh, Celtics last night. We can start. We we don't have to like go fully in depth on the Knicks. Sam can do his rant, but then we can move on to other things. But uh, last two days. Celtics or last two games, I should say. Celtics have lost to the Knicks and the Bucks. Uh, last night was the Knicks. I wrote an article about it, uh, and the first comment somebody had was, "Oh, look at that, Jalen Brunson giving Jalen Brown a hug after he just destroyed the Celtics at home." Obviously, mad that was it, Andrew. No, it's just that <laughs> I, that, that that angle always still can, like baffles me that people like career high that, comments that's people say for Andrew. By the way, but I didn't even look. We'll have to look at Andrew, but um. Celtics lost to the Bucks uh, on Tuesday, lost to the Knicks on Thursday, both in, I'll call it blowout fashion. They brought it back so the final score doesn't make it look like that, but it was a blowout. Um, Joe Mazzula after the game said, I saw two teams out there with only one of them having clinched their spot in the Eastern Conference, the other one playing with a high level of desperation. And he basically said, we can't simulate that as much as we want to try. And so they're playing harder than they are. It is what it is. So, um, they just, I like the title says, they can't relate to their opponent's desperation. That was the takeaway. I know Sam is more angry than I am. Bobby, I don't know where you fall on that spectrum, though, so please enlighten us. No, but I'm also not, it's like, given our jobs, Jack, I'm not going to get angry after a loss. You can be, you know, you can point to the flaws when valid from a loss, but that's different. It's a different vein. When it comes to what's happening this week, though, with the Celtics, It's more of a wait and see type of thing because they're not, they just don't have the same level of desperation as their opponents. Joe's just stating a fact. Even Tom Thibodeau put it a different way before the game when he talked about, hey, you know, they're right now experimenting and doing different things and we're all fighting for playoff positioning. And then there's the other side of the coin, which is how quickly can they flip the switch? And I think having, a few sharp practices where you up the intensity going into the playoffs can be really well for them once the regular season is officially over for them. So we'll see. It wouldn't surprise me. Game one on their home court, if they come out and smack whoever they end up drawing in the playoffs and they look more like the team that had a dominant regular season until now, wouldn't surprise me at all. But also a distinct possibility is that it takes a little bit more time for them to flip this switch that it's not as easy as people would like it to be. So we'll, we'll really just have to see whether these games it lingers and and bad habits persist, or if this is strictly a matter of right now, they can afford to play with their food and really just kind of go through the motions. Yeah. See, if they're going to go through the motions, I wish they would just make it like as clear as possible. Like Jack feels it was pretty clear yesterday that they weren't trying. And if you go back and you look, I guess you can really point at some things where they straight up didn't close out on shooters. A lot of the game, they continued to play drop coverage and then leave the offensive glass wide open. I would just prefer you don't play your starters. Just don't play anybody. If you don't want them to go out there and get hurt, don't play them. If they're not going to try, don't play them. They're not going to play tonight. Horford and Porzingis most certainly won't play against the Hornets tonight. 
You should have just sat everybody. It, it would have been a way better narrative. There wouldn't be any doubt from the national media. I mean, I know the players don't care, but I, I am subjected to this now. Now I have to deal with the repercussions for their actions. Do you see the chat right now? Nick's Film School was in our comments, too. All well, there. I like them, so they're welcome. But no other Knicks fans are welcome. Uh, it, it's just terrible to watch. I mean, embarrassing yesterday to me. You finally let a team win on your home floor from the Eastern Conference. None of it matters in practice, but it's just frustrating to see the guys go out there and not try hard. And it doesn't feel great when, like, Jalen plays terrible and Jalen's been bad for a while. Hmm. Listen, so all I, I hadn't looked at our comment section today. And one of the first ones I see is this was the nail in the coffin for the Seas. I doubt we even see them in the playoffs uh, unless they get the Bulls in the first round. I see Andrew True. in here. I see everyone saying season's over. It, it is baffling to me how easy it is for people to take the last two games and forget about the previous 78. Like, are we stupid? I'm sorry. Like, I, respectfully, you know, disrespectfully. Are you? What are we dumb? Like, what? What are we doing? Are we kidding? Like, the Celtics have built a brand all season of we're gonna focus on the game in front of us, and we're gonna put it behind us when it's done, and we're gonna move on to the next. And so, when the game doesn't matter, they're gonna be able to put that behind them because they clearly aren't playing their full effort. The Celtics didn't run a single offensive play all night last night. They just kind of went through the motions. They hung out. They didn't do anything. They didn't close out on defense. They they tested stuff. They let Jalen Brunson get in front of them on the pick and roll without being connected uh, and drop defense. Like th th that was the most painfully clear. We are not trying game I have ever seen in my life. I said I tweeted out when it was twenty four to twenty two Knicks two point game. The Celtics are sleepwalking through this game. You could see it from the jump, and it caught up to them because of course it did. Like. It is absolutely insane how many people I'm seeing saying the season's over. Like, oh, they're done. This is crazy. I see some people saying, there's another one I saw. Um, like, like the Knicks film school guys are like uh, in the playoffs. Like, oh, look at this. The Knicks are 17 and three. Andrew, I'll bet you a hundred dollars that the Knicks don't take more than like, maybe it'd go six. Like I, I there's hmm. like, there's no way that we're, I like this from you, Jack. Keep talking. Andrew, I we're going to take, we're going to use this game as the example. When the Celtics whomped the Knicks four other times this season, that's what we're doing. Like, this is the insanity. This you know is what he's going to say? Talk. No OG. I don't care about OG Ananobi. I don't give a single. I can't swear on the show. I don't give a single. You know what that's I'm going right, to say. You can't scare, uh, swear. I was about to start swearing. I don't give a <laughs> good save. I don't give a. I don't care at all about OG Ananobi. I, I and I like the Knicks. Sam knows this. I like this Knicks team. I think they are maybe the third best team in the Eastern Conference this year. Maybe two, but they don't have a chance against the Celtics in a playoff series. I'm sorry. Mm. We've spent the entire season talking about. Look at the Celtics mentality. Look at the way they move on from losses. Look at the way they're able to put the pass in the pass and focus on what's in front of them. But now it's different because they lost to the Knicks and the Bucks. Shut up. This, this is so dumb. This is the, the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. The, the Celtics are fine. They're going to go in the playoffs with the right mentality because they know these games don't matter. And they're going to be fine. I, 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 I am as, like, little worried as you could possibly be about this Celtics team. And I don't get it. Andrew. I don't care. The Knicks are not as good as the Celtics are by literally any metric you can find me. Not one. Not a single one. <laughs> Both teams were healthy on opening night for what it's worth. Yeah, The Celtics I mean, won on the road. You cannot convince me, Andrew. There is absolutely nothing you can say. And they had Randall playing, which is worse. Yeah, there, there's absolutely nothing you can say, Andrew, that would make me think the Celtics can beat the – no, like, NBA fan outside of New this. York City. Yeah. No, no, no NBA person outside of New York would pick the Knicks in a series against the Celtics. Not a single one. They are all on the Kool Aid today. Yeah, you're. I blind. followed a couple of them back because they started following me on like the the <clears throat> Knicks tape appearance. Like just Dude. some of the people that work with like the channel. Yeah. Oh my gosh, they are on the Kool Aid. Oh, they're on the Kool Aid. And you know, I'll say this, Andrew. I think you guys beat the Bucks in a series. I think you'd beat the Cavs. I think you'd beat the Magic. I think you'd beat the Pacers. No. <laughs> like oh, so hello, you, really. You're on the I was gonna Hi, say Rui. first and foremost, shout out Happy Friday, Rui. Good seeing you yesterday. Good vibes from Rui. <clears throat> shout out, Sam. Rui. Was that Jack's best rant on this show? Yeah, that, probably. That was I mean, I like right when now. he gets angry. He doesn't get angry like in, in that way as much. He'll get mad at me. Like I can get Jack angry, 
but very rarely does he get mad at the general public. I I am pro heel. Fuck the pu- oh, ah uh, screw so the public, Jack. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Jack. You just got me too excited. I'm, I'm sorry. So that, I will say epic Dan Lebetard rant right after the Miami Heat get LeBron and Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade stays. It's one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. And there's parts throughout it where you think he's done, and then he goes, run it back, give it to me again, and he keeps going. There were times where Jack got like a second and a third win just now. That was pretty fun. That's right. It's crazy to me. Yeah, Andrew, no. <laughs> I don't care. I don't I don't care at all. There's no the, the I, there's 18 no and three with OG and an OB yeah, banner is gonna hit different next. Yeah, uh, it's insane. It. Good for you guys. I'm I'm proud of you, really. Truly. I'm truly like so proud that you guys are 18 and three with OG and Anobi in the lineup. And also, I, I cannot wait for you. I would do anything for them to lose standing. in the first round. Yeah. Also, I, I get just... why people would love that. Hey, if they're not gonna try. Put everyone as inactive and let's That's get 48 right. minutes of Springer and Cornette, which you will tonight. But the reason why they haven't is twofold. One, national TV games come with some different restrictions on that. And secondly, Sam, they also, I don't think they want so far in advance of the playoffs to just play guys for a quarter or a half, for example. So Tatum gets 37 minutes in Milwaukee on Tuesday because in the playoffs, he's going to get that. So rather than having a dip in terms of not necessarily conditioning, but just what your on-court minutes are going to resemble, they'll, this far out, they're going to keep it to something that's in the ballpark of what it'll be in the postseason. So I'll say this. If the national broadcasts are going to make me listen to Brian Anderson for two straight games with no alternative you don't option. like PA? No, he sucks. <laughs> I should. The Celtics should be able to play whoever they want. If Brian did, did you see the greatness that Kevin Harlan brought to the end of the Pelicans Kings game when someone threw a chicken wing on the floor? That is the type of electricity I need if I'm going to have no Mike Gorman in one of the final home games he could possibly call. <coughs> Please do not make me listen to Brian Anderson. It's the it's the best punishment ever. He's awful. Uh, but to to the um, you know, they don't want to get their legs weak before the playoffs. Trot those guys out there for Mike Gorman Day on Sunday. Beat beat the brakes off the Wizards. Give him some awesome calls for his final home game of a regular season. You know, there, there's two other games. If, if I'm the Celtics, I would have – I've said it a billion times this week. Wrestling villain, you're going to have to earn your opportunity to play against us at full strength. That's what I would have did. It's it's the most fun way to do it. You've earned the, the right to – play who you want to play you've clinched the east don't go out there and make a fool out of yourselves in two straight games not that i think anybody puts a ton of weight into the bucks game but the the knicks parade is insufferable i i don't get it i agree with this jimmy j i don't know why they rolled them out in the third quarter i I don't know if it was like they wanted like to see if they got anything or or if if it was national tv i i don't get that um Andrew, this is stupid. Uh, like, this is a dumb argument to make. I, I don't know. What, I don't even know how to respond to this. This is just dumb. Like, the only reason, because, yeah, because they put the benches in in the third quarter, of course. And the Celtics bench is just better. Does this than mean the Celtics, Celtics are like, deeper than the Knicks? Yes, that is exactly what he's admitting yeah. to. And uh, good. Like, uh, you want a cookie? I don't, Andrew, I, I don't care. No, he's not. <laughs> you know, what? I'll edit. No, he's fucking not, you moron. <laughs> like, I, I'll edit it out myself. I don't care. You're an idiot. Um, and then don't panic. The irony is just like painfully in your face. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, the one thing that does make me be- feel better today is uh, shout out to Jake Eisenberg, who keeps banging the hey, the Nuggets were terrible at the end of the season drum last year. Yep. And, it, and it does make me feel a little bit better. I, I will also say whatever, like Sam swears or I swear, I type it into like, I don't like have a Google Doc. I just type it into like my. um You have a swear, like, swear jar. No, no, no. I put it like I <laughs> we should control, have a swear jar. In I show. hit con- I hit it. Control T. And then I just type like the timestamp and then the name and then the word. So when I type timestamp Sam <laughs> and then the word, a lot of uh, interesting videos pop up in my Google, <laughs> which I just noticed. Um, but anyways. Um, yeah, the Celtics are just right Jimmy J. Uh, <laughs> Tell Brunson you mean business, just foul him hard. 
Bad boy Pistons, Brunson. Speaking oh. of uh, Jalen Brown, though, uh, Jalen Brown said the Celtics are going to, quote, nip it in the bud. By the time the playoffs come around, um, he wasn't pleased. He has always been the one to not be to be super, like, upset after losses. Relatively so. It's less so in, in the past years. But he, he always is like, yeah, we need to turn it around. Like, he, he's giving you all the, all the stuff. But Jalen has also just been not great lately. And, and I think a part of it is they are just going through the motions. And when Jalen is just going through the motions, you get the Jalen of years past where it's just put head down and go to the basket and see what happens from there, um, which is unfortunate. But uh, I think once they start playing in a rhythm again, he'll, he'll be back to the, the guy who we've seen for the entire season, because it's almost like you should take the entire sample size and use that to, to judge the team instead of two games. Anyways, Bobby, what do you think about Jalen? So, yeah, I mean, just knowing, how much he in particular gets up for the playoffs and the training he does to exert the energy that he outputs at both ends of the floor. I'm not worried about him going into the playoffs. I'm not worried about this team and going to overreact to them not being fully engaged and sleepwalking through these last couple of games. He does make an interesting point though, that we shall see about where he said, quote, we, we didn't. Uh, so he said, we haven't played to our standard, return the physicality. The game has shifted a little bit, and it's going to shift even more in the playoffs. And so that is true, where teams in the past, teams this season, have slowed the Celtics down because of physicality. It's easier now to muck up the game because of the change in how it's governed all of a sudden since the All-Star break, allowing defenses to be more physical, to the point that Adam Silver came out and addressed it and said there wasn't a mandate to the officials, which mm. interesting. And so it is going to be interesting to see who they draw in the playoffs, how physical is that opponent, and how well do they do fighting through it, whether it's to go and set screens, whether it's for cutting, spacing, whether it's at the other end of the floor. So that has been, in recent years, a recipe for success, especially if you look at the Miami Heat and their ability to muck up the game. So we'll just have to see in the playoffs how the Celtics combat it because down the stretch, while they also have not been fully engaged, there have been examples of them getting out muscled and, and not responding well to an uptick in physicality. Yeah, and I'm I also half concerned Jalen's hand is actually bothering him. Just because he hasn't really been able to play that well in traffic. He's been more out of control. I guess you could attribute that to focus and maybe not caring, but you know, he he doesn't look fantastic. I don't like that the shot has gone away. I know we talked about this last night quite a bit, Jack, and there's some truth to it. It feels like a lot of these guys have played worse because they're out of rhythm because the Celtics are screwing around. And and I feel that. I feel that more with Derek White. I feel that more with Holiday a little bit because those are the guys that get their shots in the flow of the offense. But somebody like Jalen, who had an excellent March, had some great takeover moments in March. He looked like 2018 LeBron going through guys' chess in March. And yet now he looks like he can't go to the basket and he loses the ball and he doesn't look like he's doing a good job finishing. He needs to get it together for the playoffs more than anybody. You want to talk about nip in the bud mirror time, buddy. Yeah. I, I think once they play, start playing within the flow of their own offense again, I think everybody will be fine. I really think it's just, they are not like fully engaged right now, which I get that it's hard to be when the games don't mean anything. And the people who are like, <clears throat> excuse me, the same people who are getting mad at the Celtics for ending the season this way are the same people who will not be happy unless they win the title, which is fine. But that means there is literally nothing that they can prove to you until the playoffs. So why That's are we right. getting mad at the last few games of the season? There, there's nothing left. Like I wrote this in my article today. There's nothing that they can do until the playoffs. There, There's literally nothing like, the difference is the Knicks could finish this year anywhere from two to six. This is what I wrote. And every game is crucial. If they want to maintain home court advantage in the first round, they can't afford to make, uh, to take nights off. Meanwhile, the Celtics should be taking nights off. Like th that, that is the difference between the two teams. They are completely on opposite ends of the spectrum. A and for the fans who want to see title or bust, there is nothing this Celtics team can do to convince you that they are real until the playoffs. So why are we spending so much energy on the regular season? It, it just, it makes no sense. Like uh, they, they are, ju they just want to be mad. They, for, they, all they want to do is be angry. That is how they enjoy sports. And sure. Fine. Whatever. Well, Missoula's quote last night was the goat, like greatest Missoula quote ever. You could tell one team has something to play for, and one doesn't. Just absolute up. shade at the Knicks. Here's my thing: if you want to have a championship bus standard, 
that's totally fine and appropriate. And for this team this season, it is championship or bust. And it's been that way for a little bit now. At the same time, it is just bananas that people will cling to the negative, the one wild loss, for instance, or not winning a championship and completely dismiss all the other impressive accolades that have come along in the Tatum and Brown era. Four times to the Eastern Conference Finals in six years when they're just now reaching their primes together. To dismiss that is insane. Knowing that in NBA history, the best player on a championship team, it typically takes that individual to get to 27, 28 years old to make it happen. To dismiss, you know, Tatum's not clutch, but he went into Milwaukee and had 46 points at Giannis's crib with their season on the line. And then they won game seven in Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals. Like there's all these impressive accolades. They came back from double digits in their first finals game in Golden State where the Warriors are an absolute machine and they beat them. Like all these examples of what they've done that's so impressive over the last six years. LeBron James called them elite for what Tatum's accomplished by the age of 26. And yet you have Celtics fans that watch every night. And when it's great, they just kind of, it doesn't really stick to them. But when it's negative, it's the biggest thing in the world and their only focus. Mm. Mm. I feel like I'm due for a rant because you guys have both have had excellent rants. I love that from Bobby. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I am championship or bust. I think the moves they made this summer were cutthroat and they need to pay off. Otherwise, it's going to kind of suck. I think um, I don't think Tatum has much left to prove in that respect. I think Bobby's right. And I'm very harsh on Tatum. I think he he has room to grow in terms of discipline and decision making at times, but he's still a really good player. I don't know if I trust him in close games right now, but in big games I trust him. I trust him to show up throughout the game. I just don't know if I trust him if the game's within a point within the last minute of the game. Maybe you give it to Tillman instead, who's shown you this season that he can put the ball in the basket when the pressure is high. Tatum is not. He's thrown the ball off the back of the rim. He's tried. Also, Tatum had one of the worst arguing foul calls of the year last year, uh, last night, where he took a blatantly contested three over Mitchell Robinson, didn't get touched, didn't hit the rim, and proceeded to bark at the officials. Stan Van Gundy was all over him. I know you guys are at the game, so you didn't have to listen to the broadcast, but Stan Van Gundy was not having any of it from him. Yeah, I don't know. There's nothing left the Celtics can do until the playoffs. It's and it was not landing space. Yeah, landing space yeah. is the fakest <clears throat> thing ever. It was the not. whole Tatum no, thing, like I, the whole Tatum and the clutch thing. Like I get that they should go to different things, and I get that he has missed those shots, and I want them to do stuff. But the people who say Tatum shouldn't have the ball at all in the clutch, I still don't get. Like he, the good things Tatum still happen is, when Tatum has the ball. Meaning, not meaning put the ball in the basket, but. Not every time he has the ball in the clutch should he be the one getting the shot. I know Bobby wanted to talk about this. So, Bobby, you go ahead. I'm sorry. Yes, I appreciate that. So, my, my thing is not that Tatum is not a clutch player. I think that he could be really, really dangerous on a much higher level. The issue to me is how the Celtics approach, in particular, the final three minutes and then the final one minute of one possession games, where that to me, is what holds Tatum and this team back from being more effective in moments where most likely, as they get further into the playoffs especially, they're going to have to execute. That maybe this team that was so dominant when dialed in during the regular season can just by and large avoid having to win these narrow games that come down to the end. It's happened before. But, I mean, if they draw the Denver Nuggets in the finals, they're not going to need to pull out crunch games to lift the Larry O'Brien trophy. I'm skeptical of that. If they get a team in the Eastern Conference finals that is firing on all cylinders, that team's not going to take them down to the final three minutes in multiple games. I'm dubious of that. So to me, I, I think that is the biggest concern for the Celtics team, aside from an obvious caveat like injuries, is their ability to execute in the crunch and they certainly have the personnel to be a nightmare for oppositions if they just execute better. And what Joe Mazzulla is willing to acknowledge time and time again is, hey, we could strike a better balance between team ball and keeping it moving and everything and being more active away from it compared to running isolations. But 
they haven't really struck that enough as you get further and further and closer to the buzzer. Yeah, and another important thing you mentioned there is if you run into Denver in the finals, they have the most fail-safe, foolproof, pinpoint execution in the clutch because of how easy it is for Jokic to just pull the strings everywhere with the defense. He's so dominant. He requires oftentimes multiple bodies without even putting the ball on the floor, and that leaves either an open man or an easy offensive rebound for somebody like Aaron Gordon, which we got a healthy dose of in the game that was in the Mile High City back in early March. So you, you saw it there. You saw them go toe-to-toe with the Celtics at the Garden and eventually come out on top. But to Boston's credit, they did a good job at slowing down the Nuggets in the clutch. Like, neither team scored any baskets down the stretch. The problem was the Celtics were one of those teams and did not do any scoring. I would feel better about the Celtics getting a stop down the stretch than I would scoring. It just doesn't feel like they're great at putting it in the hoop. They they get stuck. They go too slow. I know Rui mentioned be faster, and I think there is some value in that. It's tough when you're trying to play the seconds and maybe get a two-for-one or ensure that you get the last shot with the with the clock ticking down. But if Tatum goes a bit faster, he might be able to penetrate and then make a read, whether it is to lay the ball up, dunk it, or kick it out to an open shooter. His team is so good that whatever your option is there, you're probably going to get a very great shot. And that's something it doesn't feel like happens very often in the clutch. The Denver game that they lost, it was in transition, but the Tatum miss in the corner was the first time I was like, ah, what are you going to do? That was a good look. You have to live with it. Like a lot of times when they lose these games or, or they don't make the basket to go ahead in overtime or before overtime, it's like, really, that's what they got. That's what they ended up with. And that's more the problem to me than the actual result. The process isn't even there. Jack, we talk about the process all the time where, oh, they had an off night, like the Milwaukee game, right? Like they didn't really play great against the Bucs, but it felt like they got some pretty decent shots throughout the night. They just didn't fall. It's not like that in the clutch. They don't really get a lot of good shots. Everything they get is very difficult. And I don't understand why with the amount of talent that they have. Uh, I think a big part of it is just teams guard a lot differently in the clutch um they're gonna have like they're, they're gonna switch everything they're, they're gonna make sure that nobody gets an open draft to the basket you're definitely not getting a layup in the clutch that's just not gonna happen like they, they're gonna pack the paint they're gonna force you out and they're gonna have quick closeouts and quick rotations like teams defense just get sharper in the clutch that that is what it is i don't think like jimmy j saying like jay's catch and shoot like I, I love Derek White, Christopher Zingas pick and roll. We did a whole thing on it, but a one possession to win the game, like I still think you need the ball in Tatum's hand because good things come out of that when Tatum has the ball in his hands. Tatum should and needs to absolutely be better in that situation at what he does and how he handles it. But the way defenses guard Tatum with the ball is just so different. And the gravity he creates and, and how reactionary defenses have to be to him i still think the best stuff will still spawn out of that he just needs to improve in those very specific spots sure but even in those situations where it is the last possession i think there can be more activity away from the ball even if it's just dummy action just to make it so that tatum's almost not resigned to a sidestep three that's contested and part of that is on him he could play with more force but you do understand that he doesn't want to risk a turnover, but just anything to make it so that you have more options or it's easier to get to them is beneficial to the Celtics. And then I also look at it and, you know, I think that a lot of what happens there is that defenses absolutely, they get sharper. It's harder to score at the end of games. That's why the averages on shooting percentages, for instance, are not good for anyone at the same time. I think a lot of what happens is that teams around basketball at every level, they tell themselves in these moments where the possessions matter more, we've got to slow down. But if you're all of a sudden getting away from what you do best and what's been working consistently for you, you've also played into making it more challenging on yourself to score. And you're putting all these advantages on the side of the defense. Walk the ball up the court. Everyone stands around looking. Later in the shot clock, all these things – you know, less activity, even when it comes to sometimes there's a, an on-ball screen to try and get a numbers advantage. Sometimes there's not. 
Sometimes you're screening away for people to curl off or whatever. Sometimes you're not. And so it just becomes this stagnant, late in the shot clock, slow paced operation that is really difficult to score. And again, you're giving all these advantages to the defense, whereas especially for the Celtics, because of the veteran talent they have, that I would be willing to trust them more frequently to, you know, basically in the final five minutes, if they continue to play with pace and run their offense that they were doing leading up to that moment in the game, I would trust them more often than not to get it right and produce points. That That's what I feel too. And in again, having Tatum have the ball sometimes is absolutely fine. Doing what they do all the time sometimes is okay. Sometimes that's the game plan. He's red hot. It's been working. No problem with it. But all season, it hasn't really worked. They've looked very confused, and they, off the ball, do absolutely nothing to Bobby's point. So even if the Tatum ISO doesn't go well, nobody else is really creating. And, you know, Jack, we've talked about this in the past where, well, you don't want everybody running through the paint because then you clog the paint. But if Tatum has the ball on the right wing, there's nothing wrong with running something on the opposite wing like just an off ball screen, somebody doing a pin down to come up just to give you another option. And and I think that might even go a long way because Tatum has proven he is a good decision maker with the basketball throughout the game. He's grown significantly. And that's really what separates him from Jalen. Like despite what we've seen from Tatum and despite Jalen actually making his most recent clutch shot in Atlanta, I still would rather have Tatum be the one with the ball just from that perspective. Overall, I think Porzingis needs to be involved. I, we beat the drum on that all season. Just like he's really tall. He's a built-in mismatch. And he's somebody that can draw extra attention just by touching the ball. Similar to Jokic, not to the same level. But yeah, I hate that you know there are teams out there in the Eastern Conference that are outmatched by the Celtics, but probably have something in the back of their head that tells them, all we have to do is keep it close and we have a chance. And it's Makes true. Me- <laughs> like you laugh, but it's it's true. <laughs> I just like all of these, like I, 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 I've never been as on board as the, like, Oh, they lost the Knicks. Now the Knicks have hope. Oh, the, the Celtics lose with this. Oh, we just have to do this. Like I've, I've never like seen that. Well, as, it's like, not about the Knicks nice yesterday. Thing. It's just in general. I guess. I don't know. I, and like, for, it's for, beat them in the clutch two games in a row. Other teams that are better than the Hawks see that and say, well, we can do that. This sounds like the Bulls saying, oh, look at the Heat went to the finals last year. We can do that. <laughs> like, that's that's what I hear. That's all I hear when, like, this. Like, I get it. And I do, there's some truth to it. But, like, I, I mean, just, you laugh, but don't ha- they, much- they don't win clutch games. I, I'm not, like, trying to fight you right now. I don't want to get in a yelling <laughs> match. I just don't, like, see that as much. Like, I, I don't, like, buy as much stock into, like, teams are seeing that and, like, saying, yeah, just get it to here. Just do this. Like, Maybe it's a little part, and like the Celtics aren't, they haven't been as good in clutch games, but I don't see it as like this big giant problem and like scary thing hanging over them. They're not in a lot of clutch games, which is good. Yeah. And also, for what it's worth, RJ, like I'm not even just saying like Tatum has the ball. I'm just saying Tatum has to be in the action. Like let him screen, let let, let him off ball screen, let him do something. Just get him in. Like Tatum, Derek White, Kristaps Porzingis, and Jason Tatum have like that's who needs to be in the action at the end of the game. That's all I want to see. Um, Last thing before we get to trivia, we haven't talked about it on Talking Seas, but Drew Holiday, four-year, $135 million extension, uh, going to be with the team um, for the next four seasons, declined his player option next year, so he'll make less money next year, actually, in the media term, so we'll save the Celtics a little bit. Um, but securing that core, uh, you have to imagine Tatum and Derek White extensions are up next with the way they talked about this Drew Holiday one. Bobby, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so there's a lot of talk of, Four years, $135 million for someone who turns 34 in June. But on this team, as they continue, ownership continues to spend and invest and keep this core together, then as long as he's not too far up the hierarchy, then he's in a position to age as well as anywhere he could possibly find around the association. So Drew Holiday has been so important to this team's success. You really can't understate what losing him would do to their defense because he is the quarterback. He is the one who's probably the most in sync with Joe Missoula about what are we seeing and what do we want to run here? He wreaks havoc in a number of ways. I think people get carried away with the Joel Embiid thing because that was a handful of possessions in the first quarter. The first time they saw him sample size isn't that large, but yes, his assignments have ranged from Embiid to Julius Randle 
to shutting down opposing point guards and then wreaking havoc in the middle of their zone when deployed there. So defensively, he has been a an all-defensive caliber player for them. And then at the other end of the floor, as everyone here knows, lowest usage rate of his career, but the highest hit rate from the corners. And so he's been an absolute knockdown, automatic catch-and-shoot release valve for the Jays. And then on top of it, they know that, hey, if we want you to run the offense, not that he does it that much, fully capable of going ahead and doing so. We can put you in another role. He's just a flat-out hooper. So whatever they ask of him, he's going to do it and do it well. So I like this extension, and people have talked about other examples of guys who got a a contract and then didn't age well as they hit their mid to late 30s. But Drew Holiday, as long as he stays healthy, I mean, the man is in phenomenal shape and looks like he could jump on an NFL NFL field and play free safety right now. And he's not going to – like, he is such a shining example. Him, Al Horford, these older veterans that take care of themselves well day to day and do the work. So I I think it's a smart move. I think it's a a meaningful message to the locker room and and to Tatum and Brown in particular from ownership that we're not just talking when we say we view this as a big six-year window. We are spending. Porzingis extension, Holiday extension, Jalen Supermax, Jason's on the way this summer. And you would think – I would feel pretty confident that they're going to pay Derek White as well. So I don't think this was an either-or situation in the minds of ownership who will continue to spend – to try to maximize this window. Yeah. I, I mean, holiday was a no brainer to me. I think he's gelled so seamlessly. His leadership has beamed ever since his first day here. There was a huge feature about him from the ringer. And one of the great anecdotes was him showing up on the first day of practice and being like, I will do whatever let's win. And that's what the Celtics need going forward from veterans on the team. There's no problem with paying him this money. And even if you are concerned, I get it. Physical ability is a big part of being able to play defense. And as you get older, that aspect of your game is going to decline. It just does. But if they need to get off of the contract, a nice $30 million trade chip is not the worst thing in the world for a team that has all of their first round picks. We've seen other teams make lemonade out of those lemon contracts. Miami got Terry Rozier this year and got rid of Kyle Lowry, who was giving them absolutely nothing. Terry Rozier, who has played pretty well for them, at least over the last month, I believe. So they were able to make adjustments on the fly when things weren't looking as as flowery as they might have early in the season. But I, I'm all for paying Holiday. I'm all for paying somebody like Al Horford. Anytime you get yourself a nice dilf that keeps themselves in shape, that is when you, you dish out the big extensions because you can trust them to be there for you no matter what. There you go. Yeah, we talked about the Drew Holiday <laughs> extension uh, on this channel. Um, what? The there you go is electric. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I was setting up trivia. Um, anyway, like speaking it. of that, should we get into trivia, Bobby? We ready? Hell yes. Let's do it. Pope Cat. Alrighty. Also, a great point from Ruby in the comments right there. Yeah, shout out Lauren Holiday. She was at the Garden last night. Um, let's take a look. So, question today. Let me take off the questions and scores. Uh, in off. honor of the Celt- – yeah, turn the chat off. In mm-hmm. honor of the Celtics should have played their bench guys, uh, and we're probably going to see like it. That's already most points scored by Celtic in fewer than ten minutes played. So we're assuming uh, garbage time, but that's the only stat I put in. So this is since 2010. Fewer than ten minutes. Fewest points scored or most points scored, excuse me, by the Celtics when they played fewer than ten minutes. Oh my uh, gosh. Ah. Uh. This is a tough start. <laughs> this is going to have a lot of filibustering. Yeah, I think so, too. <clears throat> is there a uh, – since 2010? That was smart. Yep, since 2010. Threw it on there. Peyton Pritchard. All righty. Hold yeah, up. Yeah, Let me think, just, I guess. I'm just adjusting this. There we go. Okay. Sam, you said Peyton Pritchard? I sure did. Time All to right. book. The answer is zero. Nine. All right. All right. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> I think. Mm. <laughs> Why not? Sam Hauser. Sam Hauser. I control F on the Google sheet instead of the this one. If, cool. if the screen didn't just have some green flash across it, I would have had a devastating reaction. Not 99. Like nine. I'll take 99. Heart just went into my throat. <laughs> Good <now>. start. <laughs> nine. How do I not remember that game? 
Yeah, right. Hmm. <clears throat> Less than ten minutes. Mm. Just trying to think through. I'm sorry. It might take me a minute here. It's all good. We're on round two. The filibuster is going to be all time. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Like I had Pritchard, and that was my only guess. <laughs> that is the only thing going around upstairs for me. Is Pritchard. I love that we're tied right now for this specific question. Less than ten minutes. That's the hard part. Hmm. <laughs> I was going to guess Gordon Hayward, but definitely doesn't work. Hmm. I'm going to guess Svi. I was literally going to guess him. Svi Mikhailu. That man gets in there and fires. <laughs> Six. He knows the job. This is going to be an all-time filibustering. Pete, I literally, one, I, I literally was about to write less, and I was like, "No, that's not right," and I changed it. So I, I corrected myself. We, we w got it. Jack, we, we grammar Jack. Grammarly has corrected me far too many times for me to make the mistake anymore. There's someone who I'm try I can't remember a certain individual, but I'll take a chance on Carson Edwards. Alrighty. Also, not horrible. that it makes a difference. This is technically less than or equal to ten minutes. So in case you okay. were in case you made that distinction in your head. Well, um, I have the list up here, so now I can pick from the exact ten. All right, good. <laughs> All right. Let me double check. I just need to make sure I have the top one. Okay, yeah. Mm. All right. We're back. Mm -hmm. We're back. Um. This is this <laughs> is this is special. <laughs> um my brain is just fried. Like I'm like trying to get past like like the last like three seasons and I just can't like my brain is blocking me from really like giving it any good thought. Don't love it. Since 2010. Gonna guess. Uh, oh man. Maybe I don't want to guess that. I'm in the torture chamber. Mark Blount. Think, over, over thinking everything. Mark Blount. I wish he was the, I wish he was an option. I would guess him. <laughs> I'm gonna guess Rob. Robert Williams. Correct? Yes. Clarifying. Ten. Wow. Good Ten. answer. Good answer. Good answer. Creative juices have begun to flow. Well, I'm I'm between two individuals, and I just I don't know if I can bring myself to take a chance on one of them. It's tough. The other concern is if I short putt that you might put this out of reach with your next guest. Oh, uh, I see. Yeah, I mean, I feel that. All right, I will. Take a chance on Aaron Neesmith. Oh, that's a good guess. I hope so. Yeah, good guess. 11. I'm going to guess Luke. I like that. 
I was expecting a filibuster. I'm not prepared. Hold, please. <laughs> no, he said he had it ready. Eight. All right, not terrible. It's a good one. It's a good guess, RJ. Text me, RJ. <laughs> <laughs> this is one like after we're finished, I don't want you to tell me the answers because I have some that I want to fire off that I'm too afraid to guess. This is like truly like an example of how NBA players must feel like knowing they can do these crazy like trick skills that they would never do in a game because they don't want it to bite them in the ass. But that's how I feel with some of my guesses in the pocket. The the 10 minutes thing is starting to get to me because I have I have some a lot of names all of a sudden. I like all of the options I'm starting to come up with. I just don't know if they ever did well while kept under 10 minutes. That's the tough part. And I feel like you don't remember like a 10 a 10 minute stint that was just electric, right? The eight was, that was a big one. All right, I'll take a chance. Hmm. This, this could literally be a zero. Uh, Rui, that's a pretty good guess, yeah. I'll go with Eddie House. I don't know if Eddie House was on the team. Wasn't he in the 2010 season? Or isn't that when he got traded? I don't know. I don't know. You You probably have a fonder memory of it than me. Uh, I have unfortunate news. <laughs> um, oh, no. I cannot find him on here. Uh, he was on the team in 2009, 2010. So let me go. I'm going to go look. <laughs> Saint. Do you, Less than this, this is up to Sam. I can throw another guess out to make it easier on Jack. Oh, no, I have an answer. Okay. <laughs> That's up to Sam. It's just not one you're going to like. <laughs> Edward. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. This is a high pressure situation because I probably could put the nail in the coffin here. Yeah, don't Edward. blow it. Uh, fumble. Edward. Edward is so funny. <laughs> fumble, Sam. Hmm. I'm going to guess Nimi. Ooh. It is what Rui said. I love that. That's curtains. He just gets in foul trouble too quick. Eight. And I unfortunately believe that is, in fact, curtains. Yes, that's it. Okay, before you tell <laughs> us. I will say there is one 13er. So you could have gotten real close with no cigar. I don't think I have the 13er, but you do. <laughs> it's a <laughs> random name. Yeah, you would not get the name. All right, then just in the trying to go with some complete rando. Yeah, hit me some. Von Wafer. No, but he's on. He was on 
I don't know if he's on this list, but he was on the list when I had it at um five minutes. <laughs> oh my he scored, gosh. He scored seven points in five minutes. That's electric. That would have yeah. been a devastating blow if it was five minutes. Right. Yeah. Jordan Crawford. Jordan Crawford. He's not Is on he the a less than 10 age. guy. I thought Probably of him not. too, but I was afraid that <clears throat> I will say. Um there's a name on here, second on the list, who started the game, but it was April 26th. So they yanked him. April 26th. They yanked, they yanked, they yanked of, him. Uh, what year? 2012. Gigi to tell. Uh, I'm just gonna answer the chat. Yeah, that's that's ten points. Gigi to tell me. It's Paul Pierce, guys. He had 12 and seven minutes played, but they pulled him out of the game because he it was April, and so the game didn't matter. So they just pulled him. Yeah, nobody okay. would have guessed that. No. I was going to uh, guess Michael got... Petrus. <laughs> oh, oh, that's let me look. Game. Let me control F. I guess I'll open the chat now. Yeah, it doesn't exactly. really matter. <sighs> Do you think I know how to spell Michael Petrus by now? Okay. <laughs> Uh no no Michael Peters on the front okay. page at least. I had um. What about, is Nate I was Robinson on there? Christich. Nate Robinson's thirteen points. I swear I had, to God, I was Nate Robinson came through my head too. <laughs> yeah, I was between 13. him and Eddie House. And... He's the number one answer. Thirteen oh. points. Thirteen points in seven minutes on April 9th, twenty ten, against Washington, and a ten point loss. I should have guessed him, especially given the circumstances. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was Nanad Kristich on there, Jack? How do you spell Nanad Kristich? N E N A D K R S T I C. He's not on the first page, so I'm not looking. Okay. Delano Banton would have gotten you 11 points. Um, oh, wow. Our good friend Daniel Tice at 12. Go. Uh, Zeller at 12. Tremont Waters Zeller. at 11. Sullinger on there. Jonathan Gibson at nine. <laughs> if you Juwan remember that. Johnson is wild. Juwan Johnson is up there, yeah. Tremont Waters, Marky Daniels, <clears throat> Marshawn Not Brooks, Romeo, Greg Monroe. Salinger. <clears throat> Not a Romeo. Derek, Derek White would have gotten you eight. Lamar Stevens, eight. There you go. All right, you guys want to do the Daily Dozen? Let's do it. Pull it up. All righty. Cool, cool. All right. Let me move myself to the bottom here. <laughs> so I'm not covering the uh, screen. And we'll get cooking. Really, right. I might have known that Nimi was your guess, but I did think about him because of the trend I went with the big guys that would play short minutes and dunk a few times. <clears throat> All right, NFL. During the 2002 season, this AFC franchise went to the Super Bowl. They wouldn't make another playoff appearance until more than a decade later. I think the Raiders. Yeah, it's got to be right. the Raiders, right? That's what I'm thinking. All right. All right. <laughs> this guard didn't make his first All-Star team until his ninth season while playing for the Raptors in 2015. Then he'd become a six-time All-Star. It's Lowry, Lowry, right? Yeah. Has yeah. to be Lowry. MLB Barry Bonds spent the first seventh season of his MLB career with this National League team Pittsburgh. from 86 to 92, winning two MVPs before joining the Giants. Is it? Yep. All righty. Science. SN is the symbol of the periodic table for this element with the atomic number of 50. I have no idea. I used to really like chemistry too, man. It's not silicone. You want to come back to it? We can come back to it. Celebrity mashup. Glenn Close is one. Alrighty. Who is that woman? Is it John Stewart? I don't know. I, I don't know who the guy is. The woman's Glenn Close. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I don't know who the man is. Oh, Bruce I can see that. Cooper. Rui, Rui might have it. Bradley Cooper's not bad. I'm down to go Bradley Cooper. Bradley yeah, Cooper going close. I hate that. I hate that. Yeah. All right. Well, Hell yeah, Rui. 
the cravings value menu can be found at what major fast food chain? It's Taco Bell. I think it's Taco Bell. I think right? it is Taco Bell. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, God. Winning a best. Oh, RJ's oh. got it. Ten for that boy RJ. Ten. He's correct. Let's go. Winning a best actress Emmy for the role. Tony Collette played a wife and a mom coping with disassociative identity disorder in this comedy dramedy. In the Showtime dramedy from 09 to 11. I have no idea. Dramedy. Is it Shameless? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know who Tony Collette is. But I've never no. seen Shameless. Oh, Shameless, Shameless went on for so much longer than two years. Yeah, All but they, she might have only had a role on that show for a couple seasons. Oh. Am I allowed to Google who Tony Collette is, or is that cheating? <laughs> no, don't. <coughs> Chat might we be can come back to on it. That one. Come back. Movies. This 2014 superhero sequel film featured villains. Jamie Foxx is Electro. Dean DeHaan is Green Goblin and Poggle. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. <laughs> is it 2? Yeah, which I've only seen once. <laughs> there we go. Featuring Billy Ray Cyrus. No, Lil Nas X released this 2019. Old Country Town Jackson Road. Man. Old Town Road rocks. TR. <laughs> TV. Okay, this is the last one we need. Do we want to go with Shameless and Double Dip? Pretty, I'm pretty sure it was on what? Showtime. Does anyone in the chat the know? I just don't know who Tony Collette is. Sorry. I don't either. It's there I mean, was no wife. Like... In I don't know. I, I haven't. Yeah, seen no, no, Frank. Well, so I think they're divorced. Maybe not, but Frank William H. United Tracy States of show. Tara. Is that a real thing, RJ? Let's RJ, is that the RJ. show? There it is. Respect. All right. Wow, no idea what, what that is. Well done. That was electric. All right. Thanks, RJ. Cool. Well, we're done. Good <laughs> That's session. trivia. Welcome that in. Sick. All righty. Well, chat, thank you all for tuning in. Uh, Bobby, any final thoughts? I think we hit on it all. Sweet, sweet. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to check out Bobby's work at si.com slash MBA slash Celtics. Uh, subscribe to the How About Them Celtics YouTube channel. Leave a like on the stream. Uh, we'd appreciate it very much. Uh, and I'll let Sam wrap it up. Yeah, thank you very much for listening or watching. Make sure you give Bobby a follow on Twitter at Bobby Kravitsky. And you can check out his work for SI Media on Inside the Celtics. You can subscribe to our channel. How about them Celtics? You'll get these talk and sees Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. We're live for pregame a half hour before. We're doing Celts of the Round Table Tuesdays around 6 p.m. This week will be 9. Then we have full pods coming at you Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, and game recaps the morning after each game. You can find the recaps and pods audio only on Spotify and Apple. So if you follow us there, they'll go right to your feed. You can email us at hbtcpod at gmail.com. Give us your thoughts on the final stretch here. Send us your rat lists. It's a ton of fun. You can follow us on socials at How About Them Seas for Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. Our Facebook is just the name of the podcast. Our streams are there. They're on YouTube and they're on Twitter. Jack's Twitter is at Jack's Mine is at Sam LaFrance NBA. It's up for us. Bye. <laughs>